Go Robin, ahead. before we go to the, the painting, what we're going to do is look at um, a talk back that is very deliberate. I mean, this is a uh, Winslow Homer painting, The Veteran in a New Field, and we'll talk about that. And then we're going to look at a poem by Natasha Trethewey, a contemporary African-American poet who was the poet laureate, and she entitled her poem, Again, the Field. So sh this is, again, a very deliberate talk back. It's not one that we found and said, oh, these do work well together. This, this was Natasha Trethewey talking back to Homer. Uh, so we're just going to start with the painting. And, and very often you do, and this is, again, like the Bruegel and the Auden one, very nicely paired with, with the painting, which we know often engages students in ways that, that a, a more difficult poem might not. So Robin's going to talk about Winslow Homer, and then from there I'll do a little talking about trek away. Robin? Okay. Um, I, I mean, I, I find working with visual text very satisfying. I find that students take risks um, in their analysis that they're a little afraid to do with text, but that there really is a carryover. Um, so I'm going to do a little close reading of, of this painting, uh, which is 1865. Um, Winslow Homer, it's oil on canvas. It's not very big. It's a little, tw little over 24 inches by 38 inches. It hangs in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Um, and it's wonderful to go see in person. Um, but it also, I think, shows up really nicely in reproduction. Um, so the Metropolitan Museum of Art's um, website says this about the painting. Painted through the summer and fall of 1865, not long after the nation came to grips with Robert E. Lee's surrender and mourned President Lincoln's assassination, both of which occurred during the second week of April, Homer's canvas shows an emblematic farmer who's a Union veteran, as is signified by his discarded jacket and canteen at the lower right. The painting seems to blend several related narratives. Most soldiers had been farmers before the war. This man who's returned to his field holds an old-fashioned scythe that evokes the Grim Reaper, recalls the war's harvest of death, and expresses grief upon Lincoln's murder. The redemptive feature is the bountiful wheat, a northern crop which could connote the Union's victory. With its dual references to death and life, Homer's iconic composition offers a powerful meditation on America's sacrifices and its potential for recovery. Now, you know, that's the Metropolitan Museum of Art doing our, our homework for us, and we hope that when you show this to your students, you let them do a little bit of close reading without that, because I think there are more things to look at in the painting. Um, you'll notice that the character is centered on the canvas, and the sky, the uncut wheat, and the cut wheat make up a third of the canvas each. The horizon is very high. It's almost hard to look over the wheat to see it. But those horizontal lines really do create a feeling of peace. Um, the veteran's back is to us, and while his body swings left, his upper body, I should say, swings left, his head faces forward. Um, as we mentioned above, uh, his scythe is a little unusual. We'll come back to that. But it's swung out. It's about to swing right for another cut. So there's a, a feeling of, of him being caught in a moment. Um, the, net, the veteran is sturdy on his feet, on his two feet, and in the right foreground you can see his jacket and his canteen that he's dropped on the ground. The colors are vivid. The blue and gold, I, I was looking at this and all I could think of was amber waves of grain and beautiful for spacious skies, although America the Beautiful was written 50 years later, almost 50 years later. Um, the, the lines of the grain in the foreground direct your eye to the veteran and, and also push our eyes up to the sky through that narrow figure in the center of the frame. And our eyes are also forced left and right to take in the openness of the field and the harvest. Um, in this painting, as, as the Met mentions, the veteran farmer uses a single-bladed scythe, and it all, this was already out of date in 1865. Um, the first side that he painted, that Homer painted, is, is faintly visible in the picture, but of course this side certainly re references the Grim Reaper, who is always pictured with a single-bladed side like this one. As we know, some of the bloodiest ba uh, battles of the Civil War were fought in fields of grain, and if you have CIA lit, you can see the photographs such as uh, the Confederate dead before the Dunker Church and a harvest of death on pages 685 and 86 both very vivid photographs of dead bodies on fields of wheat. Um, so this painting tells a lot of different stories, I think, and it asks a lot of questions, too. Um, you know, one, based on the title, is that the farmer's an archetype, and as the Met says, an emblem, re representative of all veterans. 
Uh, you know, we can read him as a northerner because that's what his code is, but, you know, he's out there with no jacket on, and he does seem very, very universal. We don't see his face, just his body. It's somewhat stooped, but it's hard at work and sturdy. Another story is that the farmer has come upon a field needing harvesting, thrown down his jacket, and gotten to work. I don't know. It's, there's something so spontaneous about this. Um, is it the north? Is it the south? Does it really matter? Apparently, the year after the Civil War, the, the harvest was as rich as it had ever been. Um, you know, it asks a question about what the veterans will do when they return to war. As we know, almost all of the many, many, many of the soldiers on the north and the south were farmers. What fields will they sow? What does it mean that the farmer can barely see over the wheat? It's kind of interesting that, that it's so high and the sky is, is so almost out of the picture. Um, it's a story of redemption, certainly, the fields growing, the bloodied fields redeeming themselves in wheat and grain, even on the bloodiest of battlefields. And finally, it's always interesting to see what's not in the frame. We don't know where the veteran came from, where the field is located. We can't see behind beyond the high wheat. And now we'll take a look at what Natasha Trethewey has to say about what she thinks is might be just outside the frame. <laughs> 